Well, thank you for being with us on the Oval today. On behalf of Colorado State University, I want to welcome you to the President's Fall Address and University Picnic. We are regularly given opportunities to respond to challenges, both local and global. Witnessed just a few weeks ago, the destruction of the Equine Reproduction Laboratory by fire on the Foothills campus. It is an honor and a privilege to stand here today and recognize that our CSU community stands second to none in its commitment to overcoming adversity, to working together, and to rebuild to be better than ever. I'm very pleased that the university views this as an important program, that we will rebuild it, and we'll rebuild it to a point where it's better for students, better for our faculty, and better for the horses that we manage here. <laughs> I think it was evident within two or three days that, oh yeah, we're going to get there. And it isn't just going to be because of the, uh, of the remarkably talented faculty and staff that are out there right now, but because of the hundreds, uh, if not thousands, of people that are standing behind him to help him down that pathway. When we got through the first 24 to 48 hours, we still had to focus on the task at hand. There were still mares to be checked. We had a continuing education course. Tomorrow we'll have research projects that were ongoing. And so we, we've been dedicated to the horse industry for many, many years, and that's going to continue. And I think that's, that's why the horse industry should care about CSU, is, is the history of what we've done in the past and are likely to do in the future. But when people reach out and say thanks and we want to make sure that you still have what you need to do what you've been doing, it makes you want to build it bigger, better, and faster. It was a tragic event, but it was an also an event to let us sit back and see you know, where the program is going and where we may want to change in our research areas and the clinical area and how we can actually expand on some of the teaching and make it more of an opportunity for all the students here. You know, I remember when that building was built. That's past. Now we're looking at not just meeting the obligations that we have to meet right now, but how to expand what we can deliver in the future. They should be highly vocal. They should be rather animated. They're going to we got to work hard to maintain the leadership we got in this this area because I think anybody that's a supporter of CSU and knows this Diane Lab or the Equine Reproduction Lab knows that hey this is one of our best best facilities we got going as a as a whole school goes. It's really up to the donors to really make sure that we keep that high quality, high standard going forward. got a 30-year history of, of equine reproduction here. And what we're looking forward to now is the next several decades. These were people that defined what equine reproduction is. Started at the most basic level and from that emerged all of the modern techniques and technologies and approaches that are used in the horse breeding industry throughout the world. A lack of vision has never been a problem. We've been an institution that has been uh, focused on, on research first to understand equine reproduction, providing clinical service which is based on that, and ultimately teach. And we teach the horse owners, veterinary students, undergraduate students who are, who are going to be out there and are the next generation of people to be involved in the, in the horse breeding industry. In this day and age, we're discovering things daily. Uh, that we don't have time to write in the book, so they get it on the chalkboard before anybody else ever gets to see it. The tornado that, that hit Windsor, Colorado was, was devastating to, to really to all of northern Colorado. And when we heard that this mare had been injured in that tornado, we were all looking for something we can do to, to give back, essentially. So the, the call was made over to us to say, can we generate a pregnancy from this mare that was not going to survive? And ovaries were removed from that horse uh, when she was euthanized. We collected eggs, unfertilized eggs from that mare, ultimately did this advanced uh, procedure of intracytoplasmic sperm injection and generated a couple uh, small embryos and those embryos were transferred into recipient mares and thankfully two of those recipient mares became pregnant and ultimately carried uh, the pregnancies out and gave birth. So now every day we wake up and, and thank them for what they've done when we look out here and see our beautiful colts 
and know what future we have with them. They brought us two beautiful miracles. What that story and that opportunity provided was that, that we could show this family and then the equine community that not only do we care about, about people and their horses, but the technology that has been generated here and developed here can be applied directly to the horse industry. Similar versions of that story happens on a, on a fairly regular basis now. We're strong believers that actions speak louder than words in saying thanks. That's why we're you know, dedicating ourselves to continue to give back to CSU. I hope that they can rebuild the ERL and, and continue their wonderful work and give somebody else a miracle that they can talk about for the rest of their life.